Painting Portraits, Principles Portraits have been painted for many reasons, too. 1. Achieve a likeness of the sitter's features. 2. Preserve the identity of someone for future generations, particularly before the advent of photography. Point 3. Create a souvenir, a loyal remembrance of someone now absent or dead. 4. Establish a public image, emphasizing the sitter's status, fashionable looks or personal qualities. 5. Record the artist's response to the living presence of the subject. 6. Represent the essential dignity or nobility of the human subject. 7. Recreate in a contemporary setting the norms of classical portraiture. 8. Explore the personality, psychology or inward qualities of the sitter. 9. Develop or extend the necessary painting skills. The aims are far from exclusive, and portrait paintings today will be balancing many of these aims against the fee and expectations of the client. Painting a portrait, some general advice. Most portrait artists begin with drawings of the sitter. These do not supersede photographs, but are generally preferred as the very act of drawing requires the artist to study and understand what he is seeing. Nonetheless, there can be problems. Some drawings will come off straight away, but many only after a great deal of effort, and on occasions nothing seems to give a likeness. For that reason, some painters, particularly the more experienced, begin immediately on the oil portrait. By moving from general appearance to telling details they avoid producing a photographically correct but facile, bland, unilluminating facsimile of the subject. Some general hints. 1. Use the appropriate medium in preliminary work, pencils for a small and or detailed sketch, chalks or conte for the broader sketch. 2. Ensure the lighting helps to give strength, solidity and character to the face. It is very difficult to capture a full face likeness if the lighting and features are such that the features are not tightly organized by structure. Eyes and mouth that float in a soft woman's face where you cannot put muscles, wrinkles and shadows are particularly difficult. Avoid full face if you can. 3. Never make the face full size. Two thirds is the normal limit and half size is safer. Too large a paper or canvas size leaves wide spaces which are difficult to fill, and in which it is difficult to place features accurately. 4. Closeness to model is important. Many expressive details of eye folds and mouth are lost a few feet further out. 5. It's usually best to block in the broad tonal or structural masses and then follow in detail with the eyes and nose. The triangle between eyes and tip of nose is a useful reference. Portraits, painting on a dark ground. Solomon 5 suggests these steps for portrait painting. 1. Make an accurate sketch in charcoal. Ensure this is correct. 2. Model tones only in terps thinned raw umber and white. 3. Repeat stage 2 several times until modeling is correct. Each attempt should completely but thinly cover the previous. Pay attention to hard and soft edges, skin over bone and pulpiness elsewhere. Tone should be appreciably lighter than intended result dark grounds tend to absorb mid-tones and darken with age. 4. Dry thoroughly. 5. Paint shadows in a mixture of Indian red and black, highlights with stiff white, and intermediate tones with a mixture of these colors modified with a cobalt or a very little chromium oxide green. 6. Dry thoroughly. 7. Glaze and or scumble this grisel with red and yellow pigments, either in oil, or oil and glazes mixed. Portraits, painting on a toned ground. The following approach is more general, and emphasizes the need to a, work out everything in advance and b, undertake oil sketches to solve problems as they arise. 1. Prepare ground properly, absorbent if you are using much medium with paint, less absorbent if you're using glazing approach. Grays, greens, pinks, browns and buffs colors are best, all pale. 2. Decide composition beforehand, either by roughing out in charcoal or by tonal drawings. 3. Work out palette prior to painting anything, and decide in this order, skin tones, then hair, then clothes and finally background. Adjust tone, hue, purity of color in clothes as necessary. You may need to make many oil sketches to harmonize everything. 4. Use lateral frontal lighting. Shadow pattern should aid composition. 5. Ensure movement of body does not follow that of head. 6. Make background some neutral color, not necessarily darker than shadows of head. Portraits in oil, specific hints. 
There is no correct approach, but many authorities suggest something like this. 1. Paint shadows to define broad structure, starting with nose. 2. Lower value in lower half of lighted area to help highlights above. 3. Make muzzle area the same color as rest of flesh but cooler. 4. Add touch of color where shadow meets light. 5. Try Venetian red as alternative to raw sienna which loses intensity with white. Paint hands etc. with these two colors and white. 6. Use cadmium colors for fair complexions, and earth colors for swarthy. 7. Shadows should be similar to background colors. 8. Add background colors to flesh tones to make area recede. 9. Tonal range of hair, light to dark, is often that of eye, highlight to pupil. 10. Highlights pick up structures and have to end on them. 11. Start with shadow areas. Cadmiums with black, cobalt, blue, ultramarine and umber make good shadows. Deepen shadows if face lacks structure. 12. Break the face into planes, assign tones of one hue to these planes and paint them simply. 13. Warm skin areas always have a little cool color, and vice versa. But keep the light areas and the shadows distinct. 14. Thick flesh areas are warm and bone areas are cool. 15. Bring cheeks and chin forward with warm colors. 16. Create warm backgrounds by taking shadow color and both lighten its value and weaken its intensity purity. 17. Create cool background by choosing the cooled gray color that will represent the turning planes of your object. Cool with raw or burnt umber or with a little cobalt blue. 18. Don't let backgrounds overpower subject, make them more neutral to make subject come forward. Thank you for feeling our sharing. You can make a picture for yourself as a souvenir, for your friends, relatives. Or now, if you want to make a surprise gift for your dearest ones. You can give this great job to us. Please send us your most favorite photo and we will choose the best artists to convert into a work of art by hand painting. Your loved one will certainly be very happy to have this meaningful gift. Right now click on the link below the description. And enjoy. If you enjoy this video please like and subscribe for more or share to help more people. Thank you so much. I attached link below description. Access now and follow it. Thank you.